one thing that I've I've had in my educational background is I've always taken breaks and you know it's like you know what things are getting busy I'm gonna not take a class this next semester um, and focus on this and it is always so much harder to go back so I always encourage anybody who's like I'm gonna take a break from education don't it's so much harder to go back like it's one thing where it's like you know I've got my bachelor's I'm gonna go back for a master's in a few years that's great but if you're just trying to get through your undergrad I mean don't take breaks <laughs> it's so much harder to get back into it hey what's up guys Ryan Glick here and today I have Trent Bray on the show Trent is the owner and founder of Hustle Energy and he's also the host of the Hustle the Day podcast uh, Trent has a kind of an unconventional background as far as his schooling and everything like that. He was a non-traditional student, so he didn't go to college right out of high school. And I think it was really interesting talking through his experiences of going right out into the workforce and then ultimately making the decision to go back to school to work on getting his degree. So he shares a lot of his insights as far as what it's like going back to school, what it's like working full time. Uh, working on your career at the same time that you're working on your degree. So he shares a lot of really good insights. All right, before we get over to the interview with Trent, I uh, just wanted to let you know that you can find the show notes for this particular episode on my website at ryanglick.com slash episode 009. All right, with that said, let's jump over to the interview with Trent. Hey guys, welcome back. I have Trent Bray with me today. Trent, how's it going, man? Doing well. How about yourself? Yeah, can't complain. Not too bad. Uh, things things are pretty good. Yeah. So um, one of the things that you know, I was going through looking at your uh, kind of your path to where you got today, and one of the things that stuck out to me was that you have, I guess, what I would consider to be a non traditional educational path. So you yep. you know you went uh, from high school right into the workforce. And then later on decided to um, go back and get your degree. And so I'm curious, you know, looking back at high school, did you always, was that always your plan that you wanted to go from high school to um, kind of get started in, in uh, your career and things like that? Or was, was college delayed on purpose or what, what was your, how did that happen? Yeah, so I, I honestly, I should have taken more of the traditional route because in high school, you know, I did a lot of concurrent enrollment and, you know, I had at least a year's worth of credits through the local community college uh, accumulated during high school. But, you know, both my parents were entrepreneurs and I just, even though my entire family has, um, you know, more degrees than I can count. Like they, my brother, for some reason, just collects degrees like they're trophies or something. Um, and, you know, I've got uh, sisters who are nurses that keep going back to school to get masters and get, uh, you know, become nurse practitioners and all this. To me, it was like, I, I'm the youngest. And so I saw my parents in their most successful uh, time frame in entrepreneurship so it's like no I'm going for that like that's that's just mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do and so yeah it was kind of always the plan um uh, of you know get out there get working working on my own thing as much as I can but uh I actually started prior to high school when I was 14 I started doing web design mm. um I just was interested in it and I you know, it was a simpler time in terms of web design as you're familiar with what web design is involved yeah. <laughs> with now. But at the time, I could just go to a website, click view source code, and I could just look at the HTML and I just reverse engineered it. It's like, okay, well, I know I need to have this HTML tag and then I know it needs to end with this HTML tag at the end. And the rest I could just figure out, you know, along the way. And so I started doing, uh, web design for local companies and you know friends and family and things like that and then I took that and got some vending machines and so I, I was doing entrepreneurial things even before high school and so it's like so I'm you're just so you're building you were building websites for companies when you were like 14 15 yes that's yeah. awesome so a that's friend so and cool. I um yeah it was it was a lot of fun you know and fortunately my parents had an office and so it's like 
oh, if you've got a meeting, you can take the conference room for a little bit. And um, so cool. it was it was a unique experience, uh, you know, talking to potential clients and whatnot. Uh, but I just figured, you know what, that was going to be the path. And uh, as we've talked about uh, prior to this, but, you know, my path ended up being getting bored with something, the shiny object syndrome, jumping from one thing to another, never really seeing the success that I expected. So it's like, all right, well, you know, the traditional route is college. So uh, I took some classes through the community college, um, took some classes through um, another local college here, and I just was getting poor grades. I wasn't learning anything. And honestly, I hated it. So yeah, I stopped going to school for a while again, pursued my own thing. And then I eventually stumbled upon University of Phoenix, which I loved. It was online. I learned things. I was getting good grades. And it was just a completely different college experience for me. And I know that's not for everybody, but I loved it. No, that's good. I, I, I'm kind of, I'm curious because, you know, you went from high school into the workforce. Now, when you went to the workforce, were you thinking that, Hey, I'm going right from high school into my own business and that's what I'm going to do till the end of time. Was that kind of your mindset going into it? Yes. Yes. I, I was going to start a business and it was going to be successful and I'd never look back again, but, uh, obviously life has, ways of teaching you lessons. And, you know, I've, I've learned a lot of lessons through that process. I've, uh, you know, I had to had gotten to a point where it's like, all right, I'm out of ways to make certain businesses work out of capital. You know, I've worked retail, uh, I worked uh, at Best Buy for a number of years. And then I worked uh, selling cars for a while. I um, you know, I've, I've had some of those more traditional jobs, but then always on the side working on something or, you know, the main job was on the side in my mind yeah. while I'm working on, right. on the dream. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. It's all how you, how you've shaped that in your mind. And yep. so if you, you know, you were working these, uh, um, side hustle jobs while you're doing your entrepreneur thing, you know, while you're going through that, did you, you know, what do you think the benefit is of starting a business, starting your own business as you know a side hustle versus going all in initially? Do you think there's some value that you can get from working for somebody else if you're kind of an entrepreneurial minded person? Oh, for sure. Uh, honestly, I've 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 mentioned uh, on some other podcasts before. My fault is that I jump in too soon. Like hmm. to me, it's like why am I why am I working for someone else when what this is what I really want to do? And I just jump into it. Uh, looking back at it, it's like I look at, you know, friends who are starting side hustles and going, you know, keeping their corporate jobs. And I'm like, why are you there? And then I look at the lessons they're learning, first yep. of all, of security, of, you know, still having a paycheck coming in while you're working on your, your uh, passion project. Uh, but learning corporate structure, learning uh, how to treat employees, how not to treat employees. Uh, there's just so many benefits to keeping a job until you're ready, uh, but also at the same time balancing that with not staying there forever because right. people can do that as well. So how do you stay motivated in that situation or how have you stayed motivated in the past when you know, your your maybe your entrepreneurial venture is not going as quickly as you want it to go. It's not taking off as fast as you want it to go. You're working somewhere, and I think it can be really easy for someone who wants their own business to take off and start, you know, going the direction they want it to go, where you can become bitter toward your employer, even though it's nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're the ones who are obviously helping you fund your business venture by you going there working and they're giving you a paycheck. But you can you can kind of just look at that negatively. How how did you stay more positive? over the years and, uh, help that, you know, springboard you to your own business? Um, I can say, I can tell you what I didn't do. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I did have that resentment sometimes towards an employer, just, you know, they're holding me back or, you know, something right. ridiculous that isn't mm -hmm. actually true. Uh, 
but that was my feeling at the time. And I think what it comes down to what is most uh, motivating is understanding your goals and having a why behind it. I think if you don't have a why behind why you're doing this, uh, why you're trying to start the side hustle, you're going to get burned out from it. You're not going to um, keep going with it. And that's been the case with me. It's I don't have those goals established. I don't have things written down. It's amazing what can happen if you just actually write things down of what you're trying to accomplish and having your why behind it of, you know, what's, what's really motivating you. Is it, if it's money, it's usually not deep enough. You know, that's not a deep enough level typically of what your why is. Um, For me, it's based around my family. You know, I want to provide a, uh, a life for my family that, you know, they understand the value of hard work. They understand, you know, all these things, but at the same time I can provide um, of lifestyle flexibility that, you know, if I have a, you know, sports event for my kids, I'm going to attend, you know, it's yeah. not something that I, I want to have is my personal feeling at least, you know, is I don't want a boss to tell me whether I can go to that game or not. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, I want that flexibility to say, no, I'm going because I want to support my kid. Yeah. So, um, you know, you got to a certain point, I think it was 2011, if I remember correctly, when you, uh, went to university of Phoenix or started at university of Phoenix. So mm-hmm. you, you did that part, part time, is that right? Or while you were still continuing to work? Yes. Yep. That was uh part time, just nights, uh, you know, trying to make it work. I did attend some classes in person, uh, and I actually met a decent group of people there. And then University of Phoenix shut down that campus. And okay. so I've moved solely to online, but I really enjoyed the online learning aspect. Nice. And so while you were doing that part time, what were some of the challenges you were facing trying to continue your education while also continuing to you know work full time? Yeah, great question. Uh, it... It, it it isn't easy. Um, it's you know it's often times of okay. I know this assignment is due, but I also know this will advance my career, or you know at least I feel like it will advance the career. What do I dedicate the time to? And I took different paths and different occasions. And um, one thing that I've I've had in my educational background is I've always taken breaks and you know it's like you know what things are getting busy I'm gonna not take a class this next semester um, and focus on this and it is always so much harder to go back so I always encourage anybody who's like I'm gonna take a break from education don't it's so (laughs) much harder to go back like it's one thing where it's like you know I've got my bachelor's I'm gonna go back for a master's in a few years that's great but if you're just trying to get through your undergrad, I mean, don't take breaks. <laughs> it's so much harder to get back into it. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I can relate to that uh, from like when I got out of college um, and I did end up going back to get my master's, but, and I took three years off. It was so hard to get back into the school educational mindset um, and, you know, the traditional schooling mindset of going from, you know, school to workforce, to school again. So I, I can definitely relate to that. It's, it's difficult. And so when you did, you know, take some breaks periodically throughout the program, did you have any like <laughs> secret way of getting yourself back in the right mindset? Was there some way that you prepared? Um, honestly, no, it just kind of jumped into it, went through the pain of trying to, trying to ease back into it. Um, you know, I tried to mentally prepare myself at least a couple weeks ahead of time just to, okay, you're gonna, you're not gonna be able to do this over the next little while because you have to dedicate this time to school. Um, but it's, 
it honestly is like ripping the band-aid off it's like all right let's just jump into this cram let's study whatever whatever i have to do and i i guess one strategy if i had any strategy is i'd pick a class that i knew well enough going back into it uh, so what university of phoenix does is you just take one class at a time every five weeks it's very condensed very quick um so it's not like you're taking four classes at once going once a day or you know anything like that so um I'd pick a class that I was at least familiar with the the subject matter, so it was a little bit easier to jump back into. Gotcha. Okay, that may that makes sense. And and so you go through the program. Uh, you end up getting your bachelor's degree from the University of Phoenix. And how have you seen that um, provide value in your day to day? Has have you seen it provide value that you were hoping you were going to get from it, or was it more about was it less about the degree you got at the end? and more about the experiences going through it or the people you met, you know, what, what was the valuable part about that? Well, in the spirit of transparency, I technically still don't have my bachelor's degree. I've gone through the capstone class. I've done all the, all the stuff except for like one, uh, one or two classes. And it, I'm in one of those break periods again. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because no, they, they are, you know, the, the, there's just some of the classes that I have no interest in, no subject uh, background in, and just I've gone through it a couple of times where it's like, all right, I just need to get through this. And mm-hmm. uh, I still haven't been able to find the mental fortitude, fortitude to do that. Um, but, you know, to me, honestly, it is more about getting that piece of paper, getting that check mark because my entrepreneurial journey i know it's going to continue but at the same time it is nice to think of having that uh, ability to um you know fall back on that yeah. degree if something does happen because you know as i've experienced in my own entrepreneurial journey i don't always have uh, a a solid idea and i do have to fall back on to something else yeah. Yeah, no, that's cool to be able to have, like you said, to be able to have that to fall back on too. It's kind of like the, uh, the professional athletes, right? That, um, you know, they, they make the same comments. They're, they're going about their lives being professional athletes, but at some point that ends and they need something to fall back on. And if they don't have anything to fall back on, a lot of them end up in the spot where it's like, uh, <laughs> what, what do I do now? They, they feel lost or anything like that. And I think for people who are not necessarily professional athletes, but who are on entrepreneurial journeys, I think having that knowledge that you do have your degree, you do have that experience that could help you if you ever needed to. It's almost like an insurance policy to a certain degree. And I I also think that the connections and the people you meet, there's little nuggets you pick up throughout Mm -hmm. schooling. And I don't know that it's necessarily get your degree and all of a sudden, like you're instantly a, a better person, a smarter person or anything like that. I think you develop that throughout the entire program, you know, you get to the person you're going to become. Um, so I do want to, I want to transition really quick to what you're doing today. So, um, what, you know, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, what are you up to these days? Yeah. So, uh, my, my main thing that I do is, uh, I flip houses here in the Salt Lake Valley here in Utah. Um, uh, but that honestly is something that takes up very little time of, I've got a very good system in place, uh, and that's something I've you know learned over the years. Of um, I'm not very handy. Uh, I've had to learn it, but <laughs> um, it's not my strong suit. So you know, I've got a system in place now where I do obviously give up some profit to be able to have this in place. But you know, I identify a property, look at a property, and then you know it goes on the market after it's done. You know, I don't have to pick up a hammer or anything like that, which is really nice, which allows me time to work on my passion project, which is, um, it's called hustle energy. Uh, it's a, uh, it's something I've been working on for years and something I've had an idea for, for years prior to that. But, um, I'm in trial production again for like the fifth time of a uh, focus product. It's a powdered Mm. drink mix geared towards entrepreneurs um, and then I also have a podcast associated with that called Hustle the Day, uh, 
but then, you know, uh, like you mentioned, uh, I, you know, I established a, a course for it, um, uh, basically, a get out of your nine to five and, yeah. you know, really start, have your side hustle take over. And then I was going to launch it March 31st, which was when we got into this COVID-19 pandemic. And it's like, yep. the, not necessarily the ideal timing for that since so many small businesses are hurting and whatnot. And so that's kind of put the brakes on that for now. But, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty much what I'm doing as of right now. Well, cool. I, I am interested because you, you know, you are somebody who's been very entrepreneurial focused. You've created a course, you know, to help people kind of shift into more of a, an entrepreneurial, uh, I guess, path. Mm -hmm. What traits or what, uh, what do you think a person needs to have to be an entrepreneur versus being somebody that might be better off working for somebody else? Are there certain things you see in people that you think somebody should have if somebody's doing a self-assessment? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a great question. I think, uh, your propensity for risk. I mean, that is definitely a, I mean, an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial path there's a certain amount of risk, no matter how much you prepare, no matter how much you do, like nobody expected this pandemic to level their, right. their small business. So there's obviously risk involved in it. Uh, so understand your level of risk, um, understand your ability to achieve goals, write down goals and understand why you're doing it uh, are all going to be key ingredients because if you want more money that's not that's not a good enough reason to go for entrepreneurial journey that's where a lot of people say i want to start a small business because i want more money okay that's great but you're <laughs> going to lose a lot of money <laughs> during this process to be able to get to the point you know several years right. down the road where you can gain some money from it but uh, it's it's really you know reflecting on yourself whether you think you've You've got the guts to put up with late nights, losing money, losing sleep, um, you know, to be able to get to your end goal. Is your goal yep. worth all that to you? Yeah, I think we, as people tend to see the event rather than the process. So you see the mm -hmm. person, well, and even today, you don't even know if what you're seeing is real either with, right. with the, <laughs> the cars, the houses, the, all the, the vacations, the jets, all those other things that people like to flash, you know, on, on social media. It's like, yeah, what percentage of that can you actually believe? But even outside of that, it's, you know, it, there's so much stuff that for the people who are truly legitimately successful, there's so many things that went into getting them to that point. There's the 10, mm -hmm. 20 years of effort that went into it. And so, yeah, I think that's a, that's a very good point, you know, that you made the fact that you don't just instantly become an entrepreneur and, and just start making all sorts of money. It's not, that's, you know, there, there may be the select few, the lottery winners of people and not saying that they didn't earn it, but I'm just saying as far as the odds of the lot winning a lottery, where right. maybe you get involved or you, you start a startup, let's say, and all of a sudden within a pretty short period of time, your company's valued in the billions or something. You know, you see those people and you're like, that's what I want. It's like, but the majority of the wealthy people in this country who own businesses, they had to put in so much effort and everything like that. So I think that's great advice that you gave. Definitely. Yeah. I appreciate um, that. So you've given a lot of uh, kind of tips throughout the day for college students, the, the advice about, uh, you know, if you're, if you're going through school, you know, try not to take time off in between when you're doing things because mm -hmm. it's so hard to get back into the groove and things like that. Is there anything else, any other piece of advice that you would give to college students based upon uh, your own experience going through the University of Phoenix and uh, the courses that you took even prior to that? Yeah, I think, uh, first of all, not, not beating yourself up if you change what you want to do. So my wife, uh, she was very disciplined, uh, you know, helped by her mother, who, um, you know, my mother-in-law, she never got her college degree and it limited her career choices. She wanted, you know, a traditional career and it always hurt her options. She always got passed over by somebody who had another mm. undergrad. And so she drilled into my wife, you know, you get, 
your degree before you get married. Like she, my mother-in-law married very young. And, uh, so she's like, you you get your degree before you get married. And so my wife and I were high school sweethearts. You know, we, I knew I wanted to marry her, uh, from, you know, an early age. And she's like, well, I'm not going to marry you until I get my degree. And, um, mm-hmm. it's one of those things where it was like, you know, she didn't know what she wanted to do. You know, she dabbled in this and that and the other, and her friends did the same. And you know what? I see it all the time of people are like, I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going down this path. And then halfway through the program, they realize they don't really like it but yeah there's so much pressure of well i've got to complete this so i've got to do this and you know again with using my wife's experience she ended up just picking a you know something more generic she ended up picking finance is what her degree is in with international business and um not necessarily something she loved but it wasn't something she originally set out to do and she didn't beat herself up about it, but I see so many people that do that, you know, this is the path I'm taking. And then they get through it, realize they hate it. Don't wait 20 years into a career before you have that moment where it's like, wow, that was stupid to keep going yeah. through that process. Yeah. Don't be afraid to change what you want to do midway through. Cool. No, good stuff. Um, all right. Well, I guess the last thing, uh, what's, how can people find out more about you, about the things that you're working on, about your, you know, your product that you're working on, hopefully, re- uh, releasing here sometime soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fingers crossed. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, best way to find me is, uh, you know, I'm most active on Instagram, uh, Trent V Bray or my website, Trent V Bray.com. Cool. Well, this was awesome. I, I really appreciate your insights. I, I think you have a lot of unique things about the path to where you're at today. And I know that's going to help uh, help uh, all those who are listening, listening in, looking for just, you know, any little piece of advice or nugget they can get to help them get through school or even beyond that, get started in their career and even pivot in their career. So good stuff, Trent. Yep. Really appreciate it. Yep. Thank you, Ryan. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Uh, so what do you think? I thought it was very interesting. I thought his path of going from high school to several different ventures that he went through, then choosing to go back to school to the University of Phoenix and work on his degree there. Uh, it was all very interesting. I, I think what that shows me and what hopefully you got out of it as well is that there's no one size fits all path for you and your own career and where you're headed in life. You can go to school, you can go to college right out of high school, you can take time off, you can go back to school and get another degree. There's no correct answer you are in control of what you want to do and you just need to be doing it for whatever, you know, the right reasons. Make sure that you're doing it for yourself or for your career, for your family. You know, find out whatever that reason is for you and make sure that that's what's driving you. So again, I thought that was uh, really interesting. I thought Trent had a lot of really good uh, um, advice that he shared during the conversation. All right, so with that said, don't forget to like this video, uh, subscribe to my channel and also turn on your notifications. Really appreciate you tuning in and uh, until next time, take care.